Mum is going to be very cross with you. Cross? Why? Because that's her fairy liquid for her hands. It's for getting dishes clean. Mummy says these bubbles are soft and gentle and kind to her hands. Well, it's done a very good job on these dishes, hasn't it? Yes. And are my hands soft? Well, not as soft as Mummy's hand, but that's because you don't do as much washing up as Mummy does. I'll grieve fairy liquid. Look! A damp damsel's in distress. Huggies speed to the rescue with their rapid dry nappy. Rapid dries are new. Rapid dries absorb liquid. Faster than ever. So babies even drier. For happy endings, Huggies new rapid dries to the rescue. Every time. Some people like their hair to just stay still. I want mine to move. The actual freedom of dance is lovely. My hair is all part of the movement. Rehearsals every morning, performance every evening. Wash and go is great because actually when I've used it, I can run my fingers through my hair completely. Wash and go contains a conditioning system that smooths and separates each hair strand. And I love the way it moves. It's definitely possible for hair to dance. People on the go, wash and go. I like to wash my hair and I like to go. Tomorrow? Hey guys! Is this the foulest creature the extreme Ghostbusters have ever faced? I like the sound of that. You broke the sky with your stick! How does Winnie the Pooh do it? It's all in your fingertips. In other words, it's a mystery. That's all here on CITV tomorrow. Now it's time to join the Knights of St. Cuthbert's Academy. In bygone times on night school, Sir Roger de Corsi, rescuer of damsels, slayer of dragons. Talker of cobblers. Do be careful, Sir Arthur. Well, first be off. Tell you how. <laughs> Who is Sir Hubert more likely to believe? A respected academic or a tatty little peasant boy? A highly esteemed and much revered pillar of the educational community or an oik? We're guessing it better, help. Yeah, the... Thank you, my. In the year of our Lord 1073, St. Cuthbert built a fine academy where chivalry and daring do were taught if your parents had a grout or two. Night school, night school, the knightly code of honor is the rule. Night school, night school. There's dragon slaying drama, to suit a suit of armor, you'll be a dental charmer at night school. I love you. I love you. I love you, my pretty little kitty. Um, Sir Baldwin. And then the cat gets better, blah, blah, blah. Happy ever after, curtain applause. I see, so... Exactly the same end-of-term play as last year, then. That's right. The Herald Pat and the tragedy of his black-and-white cat. I wrote it myself, you know. The boys love it. Oh, I'm sure they do, Sir Baldwin. It's just that Sir Hubert and I were wondering whether perhaps this year we might try something a little different. Different? How different? Well, a more experimental approach to drama. It's the dead master. There is a gentleman in London. Sir Cameron Lloyd Webford for so he is called, is known for incorporating music into his productions, and I just thought we A play might... the music? A musical play? As it happens, Sir Baldwin, I have seen one of his entertainments, Moses and his tremendously colourful trousers. It was splendid. Yes. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Anyway, I've asked Sir Cameron to come and spice up our end-of-term play with... A... If I might interject, Headmaster, I hardly think the boys of St Cuthbert's would take kindly to this sort of... What about the ladies of St Catherine's? Why not, Sir Baldwin? Why should the boys dress up as girls when the girls themselves can do it so much more convincingly? <laughs> so, Sir Baldwin, do you agree? But ladies' parts have always been played by men. This is outrageous! Girls dressing up as girls, I mean, where will it all end? I will have nothing to do with it. I'll take that as a no, then, shall I? Try and keep the noise down, De Corsi. Some of us are trying to get some sleep. Skiving. How typical of your sort, Scrope. 
No point breaking my neck, is there? End of term next week. Oh, yes. And what would you be getting up to in sunny Sludgecombe? Apart from no good, that is. Oh, you know, the usual. Sun, sea, sewage and uh, maybe spending a bit of time with a certain young lady of our acquaintance. Lady Elizabeth de Gossard has already received an invitation to the Corsi Castle. Dream on, Raj. He's here, he's here, Sir Cameron Lord Redford. Well, who's he when he's at home? He's producing our end-of-term drama, peasant. Oh, that. You should have seen me in the nativity play last year. I played the innkeeper's wife's mother. Didn't I, de Corsi? How could we ever forget? No. There is no room at the inn for you and your baby and your donkey and everything. Oh, it's fantastic, Wally. The Sludge Gameco said I should go a long way. I think I know what they meant. I think Sir Cameron will be suitably impressed with his leading man. Well, you won't catch me poncing about in a lady's frock. Well, don't get me wrong. I quite like ladies' frocks. As long as I've got ladies in them. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best, Mr. Scrub? Mopping or sweeping? I've often pondered this, Mr. Grockle. Well, sweeping is the less wet of the two, mopping does provide a more satisfactory finish. You truly are a poet amongst caretakers, Mr. Scrub. <coughs> Can I help you? Yes, I'd like an office, three personal assistants, a speaking tube with a direct line to strap it upon Avon, a chair with my name carved on the back of it, a barrel of chilled well water with a twist of lemon, and an endless supply of talent. And please kindly inform the headmaster that Sir Cameron Lloyd Webfoot is here. Now move it. What? You're him? Yes, love, I am him. Now, kindly inform the headmaster. Now, choose the for rooty tooty tooty, rooty tooty too, rooty tooty 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 too. How's that? Hello? So, this is our auditorium. I thought you might like to hold your auditions in here. Sorry, now, I've got to take this. Expecting an important call. Yes. Yes. I won 75% of the gross, 50% of Souvenir Tabard sales, and we'll negotiate a song sheet deal later. Got it. <laughs> You're very special. Ciao. Now, op it. <laughs> Mobile Herald, such a pain, but you've got to have one. So, are you happy with our facilities? Happy? Sir Hubert, love. Let's make a play. Next! That sort of dancing will never catch on. Get thee from hence, Sir Dennis. I really am awfully cross with you. Oh, good grief. Uh, Will you get lost, Melton Mowbray, you loathsome little worm, before I disembowel you? Oh, that's more like it. Marvellous. I have a rabbit in here somewhere, Sir Cameron. <laughs> you there, you, the, the assistant, you. Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> Do you sing? Yes. <clears throat> but surely, there must have been one or two notable performances. Well, we're getting somewhere. Lady Elizabeth de Gossard's got a nice voice, and de Courcy's a serviceable villain, but where am I going to find a leading man? A young performer with a certain raw, gritty, unpolished, rough around the edges, take me as you find me, sort of quality that grabs you by the throat and tears at your very vitals. I say. In short, love, a star. Sir Baldwin's got a bunion and a face like a pickled onion. He looks like a bite of backside and he smells like a stone. He's ugly, he's nasty. Scrub, how dare you? How? 
dare you be so talented? And another thing, Wally, you've got to change that name. Wally just isn't sexy. Look, for the last time, Sir Cameron, I'm not dressing up, I'm not poncing about on stage, and I'm definitely not changing my name. Shame. I so hope that you play opposite Lady Elizabeth. What sort of name would you get in mind, then? <laughs> well, Rafe, Jerome, Robson, William. Robson Scrope, that's got legs. <laughs> I say, I say, I say. Oh, dear, oh dear, as the comedy caretakers. I'll leave you to it. Yes, Robson, you run along. I'll catch up with you later. Well, I'm waiting to be impressed. <coughs> <coughs> oh, Mr. Scrub. Yes, Mr. Grockle. My dog has no nose. And whatever is that? Because he had leprosy and it fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still waiting. <laughs> If it isn't the star of St. Cuthbert's running in the corridor, Scrope, it's a flogging offence. My office, please. Oh, fair enough, sir. But I'll have to see when I can fit you in. What do you mean, fit me in? Well, I've got a very busy schedule, sir. Uh, costume fittings, rehearsals, you know how it is. I think you'll find that school discipline takes precedence over this vulgar so-called entertainment. I'm not so sure Sir Cameron or Sir Hubert would agree with you there, sir. Why, you insolent? Please, sir, not in the face. I I'm an actor. On your way, Scrope. Very decent of you, sir. Is it Scrope? Oops. Ah, naughty, naughty. Oh, he's hopping against the rules. Get out of my sight! Ah, Montague, report to my office immediately. I'm going to flog you. Why, boy? Because I can. I was thinking of keeping the old bins off when I'm actually, you know, on stage. Oh, I can see perfectly well without them. And between you and me, I think I look more handsome. What do you think, Wally? I think you look quite handsome anyway, Sir Arthur. <laughs> right, now, listen up, everybody, listen up. This is how it's going to be. Right. Now, casting. Genevieve? Right you are, Cameron. <laughs> you three up there, pike bearers. Montague? Small squeaking knight. <laughs> Sir Roland? Dead body in Act Three. <laughs> Sir Roger de Courcy, you're playing Sir Dennis, the villain. Oh, yes. Nice, juicy part, this one. Cracking death speech as you lie cradled in the arms of the leading lady, Elizabeth de Gossa. <laughs> oh, I'll look forward to it. <laughs> that just leaves... Our romantic hero, Robson Scrope. Robson? <laughs> uh, what about me? Oh, yes, Arthur. Uh, props and scenery. Is that all? Yes. You'll be working with Eunice. <laughs> Backstage is where it all happens, Arthur. It's the people behind the scenes that'll make this show go with a bang. Dr. Dispenser! Doctor! Hello, Arthur. How's the play going? Well, I'm doing backstage stuff. But I was wondering if you might be able to help. Hmm? You haven't got anything I could borrow to sort of liven the play up a bit? Will a shrunken head do? Oh, I've got a, a stuffed bear somewhere. Oh, no. I need something more dramatic. An effect. You know, that's really special. Arthur, I think I've got the very thing. Make yourself useful and bring me that candle. What a mess, Dr. Dispenser. What are you doing? It's not a mess, Arthur. It's a miracle. What on earth is that stuff, Doctor? It's a remarkable new oriental compound. I had a shipment in from the Far East. It's called explosive powder. Cover your ears. I feel my very lifeblood ebbing from my veins, my lady. Oh! Is that bacon? Oh, no, it's ham. And now, as I lay here, Die. You said it, pal. Oh, my lady. One sweet kiss from those ruby lips. Any more of that, Dickorsi, and you'll get some of this. Buddy, please, they're only acting. Well, for now, anyway. Now, attention, please, everybody. Attention, please. Gather round, boys and girls. Gather round. Just a few changes. Yes, Roger, now, your speech of the last act, it was great, and you're a dear, dear special person, and I love you, but it's cut. Sorry, love. Yes. But now, why? I pushed for time, and I have to make space for something really special. Ready, Melton Mowbray. 
Now, back everybody. Do, do, please get back. Do take cover. As back as far as you can go. There we are, there we are. <laughs> right, Sir Arthur. Let her rip. <laughs> Impressive, huh? <laughs> now, this special effect will be the climax of our show. Hang on a moment. At the end, when Robson and Elizabeth sing their final heart-rending duet, this blast of sight, sound and colour will symbolise the full bloom of their burgeoning passion. Sounds all right to me. Well, it sounds ridiculous to me. I will have nothing more to do with this nonsense. I quit! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, Sir Roland, now you are our new villain. But what if Roger comes back? Roger who? Last show, biz. And then his specky pal comes up with this erupting fire candle affair. Downright dangerous. Nearly blew my britches off. Leaving Scope, who, of course, is loving every minute of it with his grubby paws all over Lady Elizabeth. Uh, Cosy, are you wearing ladies' lipstick? No, sir. I had an incident with a moustache. Oh. Anyway, I must agree with you. A scrope has become something of a nuisance. Nuisance, sir? I'd put it a little stronger than that. What? You mean like the sewage in our bathing pond? Yes, or the cactus in our codpiece. He's a very tapeworm in the guts of this school. He's an insect. He's a maggot. He's a leech. He should be stepped on like a spider, exterminated like the vermin that he is. That boy is the bane of my life, and I shall not rest until his odious presence is removed from this school permanently. <clears throat> Are you all right, sir? I shall be, de Courcy, once scrope is eliminated. Now, tell me more about this dangerous erupting fire candle. <coughs> oh, Deputy Headmaster, a rare privilege. What brings you down here? I hear tell of your miraculous new powder, Doctor. Oh, my explosive powder. Absolutely useless, I'm afraid. Really, Doctor? Utterly pointless. As far as I can see, the only thing it can do is blow things up. What sort of things? Anything. Anything? Huh. Or, I presume, anybody. That's right. And how much of this useless powder would one normally use? But one or two ounces. I accidentally used five yesterday, and all but blew myself and Melton Mowbray to our makers, as you can see. Yes, I do see. So, Five ounces would, would be, be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now, for something really important. I'm trying to split... Sir Baldwin? Where's that atom got to? So, uh, any plans for the holidays? Not really. I'm just going home. Big place is it, De Gossard Castle? Big enough so that you could, you know, invite a friend over. Well, it's got four wings, so that's about 87 bedrooms. A bit pokey then, eh? <laughs> what about you? Oh, you know, back to Scrope Towers. Just the one room. Loads of wings, mind. But all on the flies in the outside cars. Eh? <laughs> Five minutes, everyone. Five minutes. Now enjoy it, boys and girls. And remember, eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. On second thoughts, just a eyes. <laughs> Versatile. Absolutely. I've got very important roles for both of you. Oh! Sweet meats, parchment. Sweet meats, parchment. Ah, Sir Osric. Headmaster. Very, very nice. good of you to come. And ladies, and Sharp. I must say, the Sainsbury Indoor Jousting Arena has been a great success. I'm very pleased, very pleased indeed. Yes, yes. and I, I, I was hoping to have a quiet word about our competition-sized bathing pond. But you haven't got a bathing pond. No, exactly. <laughs> Did you bring your purse? <laughs> Our son, Wally. <laughs> That's from Mrs. Scrope. Um, have you met Sir Osric and Lady Sainsbury? Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, oh. How do you do? No, of course you have. 
Oh, I see our ex pet boy, Sir Hugh of Grantchester and friend. Would you excuse me a moment, please? Uh, Sir Baldwin, I think this might be an appropriate moment to ask people to take their seats. Of course, Headmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, will you kindly take your seats? This evening's performance will commence shortly. Oh, Sir Baldwin! Our Wally's gonna be a star! <laughs> yes, a shooting star. Don't miss Sir Cameron Lloyd Webfoot's next thrilling production, Judas Iscariot Supergrass, starring Elaine DePage, lyrics by Sir Timothy Rice Pudding. Get your tickets here. Marvellous prologue. Yes, his diction has come on. I, Sir Percival, the knight in white satin, do swear by the beard of St. Egbert the Hairy to vanquish the evil Sir Dennis of Doncaster, scourge of Albion and other bladder-kicking teams. And as God is my witness, I shall avenge the death of my father. Sir it's going Gendel awfully well. I didn't know better, I Milton. Swear I'd swear that Miss Sponge Bagley over there has her arm. What, you did? Oh, yes, and she's a comely wench to boot. <laughs> if I were you, I'd get over there and whisper a few sweet nothings. Do you really think I should? Yes, go on, Arthur. Don't be a plum all your life. Knights are supposed to be bold. Get in there. Uh, oh, don't worry, I'll look after your bits and pieces. Behold the beauteous Lady Aurica. Who shall save me from the beastly advances of Sir Dennis? It is amusing thou sayest that, my lady. For I was just swearing to do away with the very same black-hearted villain. Why, thou art a perfect gentle knight, good sir. And, uh, not bad-looking as it goest. Well, thou dost not resemble the thumb of a blind cobbler thyself. Thank you. <laughs> Have a thee, white knight. I shall besmatch thy satin garb with thy very lifeblood. Oh, aye. Thou and whose army? Taste us, thou, this cold steel, Sir Dennis. Leave it, Sir Percy. It's not worth it. Stand back, my lady. It might not be a pretty sight. <gasps> oh. Go on, Wally! Knock his block off! It's terribly good, isn't it? I think the best is yet to come, it must be. All set. Any time now, Sir Baldwin. Excellent. Bye bye, Scrope. <laughs> All set, Arthur. They're starting the last song. Yes. As soon as they kiss, it's boom. My hero in white satin. Alas, I must away. But stay a while, my coy young miss, for I have slain Sir Dennis, and now I claim the victor's kiss. It's time for tonsil tennis. My brave knight, thou couldst not be bolder. Tis too much. Seventy. That's right, sir. Five pounds of explosive powder, just like you said. I said five ounces. Shh. Five pounds of blowers of. Oh my. Cross your legs, sir. It's nearly finished. My heart burns with desire, my satin cloak is smouldering, my lips, they are on fire. Oh, please! Oh, will please. thou be my fiancé? That sounds like perfect bliss. Then curse up, Percy. What did you say? Come here, give, give me, me a kiss. Please.
lords, ladies and gentlefolk, another term comes to an end at St. Cuthbert's Academy, one that masters and pupils alike will remember for many years to come. In particular, I'd like to thank my stalwart, loyal and trusty deputy, Sir Baldwin de Arth. <laughs> Where would I be without you, Sir Baldwin? I know where I'd be without you. Master Scrope, would you do us the honour of leading the assembly in a final rousing rendition of the school song? Sir, I'd be right chuffed. Right. And I hope to see you all again next term, here at St Cuthbert's, this kingdom's finest night school. In the year of our law, 1073, St. Albert's built a fire